Rocky Anderson of the Justice Party, your response. Well, we've seen just another instance of Mitt Romney completely flip-flopping on where he stood as governor of Massachusetts and what he's doing now to please the likes of the National Rifle Association. We need to end the stranglehold of the National Rifle Association on our government. There's one reason for assault weapons, and that is to kill as many people as quickly as possible. And there was a federal ban on assault weapons. It expired in 2004. President Obama promised four years ago to support the permanent reinstatement of that ban. That would have been the right thing to do, but he hasn't done it. Neither of these candidates will do the right thing when it comes to ending the influence of the National Rifle Association and once and for all getting assault weapons off the streets of this country. Virgil Good of the Constitution Party. Unlike Mitt Romney, I have always been an opponent of banning so-called assault weapons, which include such things as a 30 6 which is favored by many deer hunters. If I'm president, I'll veto any ban on assault weapons. And if I were governor of Massachusetts, I would not have issued a press release bragging on how the General Assembly of Massachusetts passed an assault weapon ban and I signed it into law. Mayor Anderson is correct. This is an example of another Romney flip-flop. If you think you can trust Romney with your guns in the future, go ahead and vote for him. But there's only one candidate in this race that has had consistent and solid top ratings by the gun owners of America, NRA, Citizens Defense League, Second Amendment groups, and that's Virgil Goode, a longtime supporter of the Second Amendment. The, uh, proponent and co-sponsor of legislation to repeal the D.C. gun ban, which was thankfully overturned when the court recognized that the Second Amendment is an individual right. I will stand up for your Second Amendment rights, unlike Romney, Obama, or any of the others. Dr. Jill Stein. We certainly need an assault weapons ban, but we need more than that. There are some 260 people every day who are injured or killed uh, by gun violence. So it's very important that we ban assault weapons, for starters, uh, but there are other steps that need to be taken quickly. Local communities need to be able to regulate guns as needed to deal with their violence. So uh, we need to keep guns out of the hands of criminals. We need background checks uh, so that the mentally ill uh, are not possessing and using guns. And uh, we need to end the gun show loopholes as well, because there's far too much violence from guns, which is not needed. But in addition, we have to address the other drivers of community violence. That includes ensuring that mental health services are available to everyone. Mental health services have been cut back in a major way with all the cuts to health care, and providing Medicare for all that covers everyone, including mental health services, would go a long way to ensure that very unstable and troubled individuals are not um, getting into possession of guns and then using them. Uh, but in addition, we need to end the culture of drug violence, which also is a major uh, driver of gun violence. So that means legalizing marijuana, because it is a substance which is dangerous because it is illegal, but it's actually far less dangerous than other legal substances. And to legalize it will go a long way to put an end to the violence surrounding uh, the drug culture.